What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Work Hard Talk Shit Podcast. Today it's going to be a little bit different. I don't have Ali with me who would usually be the co-host. He's uh, busy today. But I do have a guest who is uh, going to be sort of taking his place I guess and being the other person I'm going to be talking to. And uh, that is Punchbowl Gaming. How's it going dude? Hey, how's it going? It's good. Um, Good time. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. No problem. So we have a few different channels to discuss on your end, um, and I guess we'll talk about how sort of we met and things like that as well. So um, we started about a year ago, I think, when it was the first time that I met you. Um, yeah, I think so. About then, I can't was, remember what, in what context. You was doing a twenty-four hour stream, and what was that? I had I don't know how I saw the stream, or if someone had told me. I th- it was Wadja Hat. You remember Hat? Oh, yeah, yeah. He told me to go check the stream out, so I went over, and uh, he was currently... I think he was playing um, Kerbal Space... Um, something like oh, yeah. that. Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, he was playing that. I don't yes. know why I remember this so vividly. It's it's kind of strange, but anyway. Um, you oh, was... Clearly, I, I, I had an impression on you, clearly. Yeah, obviously. So, um, I was starting to stream around that time, and I sort of wanted to watch other streamers, and it was interesting he was doing this 24-hour thing uh, for charity, of course, and uh, yeah, we yeah. sort of... But then I started to drop in more and more streams. You played a lot of battle, uh, Battlefield. Um, yeah. And then you had to sort of stop streaming for a while because you was yes. moving yeah. back from university or something like that. Well, yeah, I, I finished uni and the internet at my parents' house is just awful. Yeah. And I really, I basically can't do it at all until I move out. And I, I, I was assuming I'd have a job and move out quicker than I have, but I haven't, so... All right. That's that's my main problem right now. <laughs> Trying to find a job so I can move out and then stream again. Yeah. So um, you stopped streaming and then you got involved with some other YouTube channels. Um, you was already involved with yes. Masters of Nothing. Is that is that right? Was you involved with that? Yes. Yes, I was. That was towards the end of university. Yeah. Yeah. So just before the just before the twenty four hour stream, a couple of months before that. Yeah. So you were sort of working with a few different people on the same on just one channel, right? That was what that was. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, sort of, yeah. Recently, more what you're working with on now is um, is Stream Team Heroes. Is yes, that, is that the right name of the channel? I'm trying to get these right. That, no, that, is, right. <laughs> that, that is correct. Stream Team Heroes is is my creation. Yeah. So of, explain for the people who don't know months. what it is. Uh, it's it's okay. Stream Team Heroes is I would say a community channel where it's not anyone particular, but. Um, it's got a load of different channels on it, including my channel, um, Whimsical Nothings, and um, Jack, who keeps changing his channel name, which is now called Psych. I think he's sticking with Psych now. Right. So he's that's it. And then there's a few other people as well. Um, one of my mates, Sam, from my channel, and then a few of our other friends. And we try and do streams as much as we can. It's mainly that's all about, about collab streams on it. And then there's also a weekly podcast, which we all very much enjoy. So it's, it's, it's supposed to be a collab sort of channel where we can do lots of stuff together. Yeah, and you do like a very wide range of games. I've I've seen different people yes. streaming all different types of things on there. So if anyone likes to yeah. watch streams, obviously there's a lot of people on my channel who be watching this who do like streaming. Go check out Stream Team Heroes. I'll put a link in the description, and uh, yeah, you might you, you might see something you like on there. Um, yeah. So you also upload the the podcast, of course, which you do with two other people. Um, yeah. And again, it's with uh, Sam and Sam and Laura. Yep. Very... So if you enjoy podcasts, you're watching this, go check out because you might enjoy that podcast. Um, yes. So yeah, definitely check out uh, Stream Team Heroes. Also check out Punchball's uh, personal channel. Are you going to be regularly uploading again soon, or just got to wait until you? Move? I hope. I it's still going to have to be until I move out. I hope to be once. I was, I'm hoping Stream Team Hero takes less work on my side because I'm still sort of arranging it. I'm sort of like in managing everyone on it at the moment yeah but once it sort of flows out in like a regular right sort of a regular direction where i don't have to do too much i can probably do some more videos on um punch bowl yeah which is the aim cool cool so um i think that's enough about your channels let's uh talk about yeah, okay. some some gaming news obviously there was e3 yes. uh recently and um some very big announcements uh especially with xbox you're on playstation side there right you own a PlayStation? Yes, I'm a PlayStation, a PC, uh, not, I haven't touched Xbox. Yeah, so um, one of the games that I w- was really excited about when I first saw it, and a lot of people might have missed this, and that's uh, Sea of Thieves. Have you seen that? 
Sea of Thieves. We no. Is that an exclusive on Xbox or is it it's just on anything? Xbox and it's going to come out on Windows as well. Right. Okay. So, um, but it's basically a game. I'll explain it to you, and I'll explain it to everyone who doesn't know. It's um, a game where you're a pirate, and what you have to do is you team up with three other pirates. They can obviously be like your friends on Xbox, or I think you can probably just jump on with randoms as well. And uh, you have your own ship that you go around this open world, sailing the seas, and you find different sort of locations and look for treasure. You also get like um, riddles to solve on basically like a map. Right. So you look at the riddles, you read it, you think where could this be in the open world? You go find it, you find the treasure, you get your treasure, you take it back to like your base or whatever, and then you can like the tre- treasure like that, share it out between everyone on there. But at the same time, there's also other people and their crews also looking for the treasure and they'll also like battle with you. So you have the different aspects of, you know, just chilling out with your friends, looking for treasure, and then you come in contact with some other people and then all of a sudden it turns into like cannon fire and um, it looks it looks really good. And one of the things that I do like about it is that it's it's art style is really cartoony if you if you like not like a hundred percent cartoon, right. but you know what I mean. It's not it's not realistic looking it's it's kind of fun looking it's really bright and um it just looks really nice it looks like a really good fun game to play um and it, it also you can fire yourselves out of cannons and things like that and you won't die and oh right it, yeah it's it's a really fun little game that it hopefully it, it's a good game when it comes out it's not coming out until 2018 um mm. so you, you got my interest where you said you could fire people out of cannons yeah <laughs> so that, like <laughs> yeah that would sell it for me yeah, so because like, that sounds very similar to. It sounded familiar to Skull and Bones. that got announced. Yes, yes, um, it is. Um, it's more of a like a, I don't want to say like child friendly version, but it's you know what I mean when I right. say that it's like it's less serious yeah. than Skull and Bones. Yeah, because Skull um, and Bones I thought looked amazing from Ubisoft. Yeah, that was uh, an, another game that I saw, but like I said, I think CFPs would be more up my alley, but. Um, yeah. It's cool it's, to be honest, well. I'd probably check that out if you can. It sounds like sort of, you know, like you say, more fun, like Skull and Bones, same sort of concept, but in, well, it's using the uh, Assassin's Creed engine, so it looks like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. And it looks, looks you know, really nice, but mm. I feel like it sounds like you have more fun doing where, what game that was called. Yeah, Sea of Thieves, yeah. Sea of Thieves, I'm going to write that down. Yep. <laughs> so, that one. Xbox and I have a list PC. of this. You've got a list. I have yeah. a list off, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go check these all out after this podcast. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if it looks like a really good game. It's not coming out until 2018, so obviously there's going to be more announcements on it and things. It's probably going to have little changes to it. But right now, um, there's mm. this gameplay up where people have played it for like 40 minutes, and you can sit and watch them playing around on it. So there's a, it's already a game. It's already ready and done, but obviously they're, they're going to make tweaks and mm. make sure there's no bugs. But no, it's yeah. really good. It looks really good. It's... It's nice to see when they say it's coming out in a year's time, but it's pretty much finished. Yeah, there's a. Um, they, they're going to work hard. Yeah, ironing out creases takes longer than putting the game together, apparently. Um. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. You don't. I always end up things like Assassin's Creed that takes a year to make and comes out with faceless enemies and stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah. So um, let's move on, games. Um, right. I don't know what I want to talk about next. There's so many games I want to speak about here. Um, let's go with. A PlayStation game, and that's Days Gone. You must have seen Days oh, yes. Gone, right? I have seen Days Gone. I didn't watch much of the more recent content from E3. Right. But I have been following Days Gone. Yeah. Um, I saw there's like, zombie bears in it. Yeah. Is that is that a thing? Yeah, that was in uh, one of the... one of the. I think it was at the end of the, the trailer that they were showing. A bear turns up, right. and it had like barbed wire and stuff all over it, and it looked yeah. pretty messed up, but it was still like just running around the woods. Um, so one nice. of the big reveals, and one of, not really a reveal, but they showed a bit of gameplay. And uh, the zombies that were in the game, he, the player used as like his advantage. So like the, he come up against like a camp of uh, enemies who obviously had pissed him off for some reason. And instead yeah. of attacking the camp or anything like that, he he made a noise or he did something that attracted this big herd of zombies, and then they just ran through the enemy camp. And he just sort of snuck in around right. the back and got a few kills himself that, and stuff like that that so. sounds amazing yeah that so sounds incredible it's like on far cry where you used to you could get like a lion or something to go into the camps yeah and kill all the people well, i used to enjoy doing that that do with a horde of zombies that's yeah that's what i want 
when you can use the environment and things like that, and there's different ways of playing it as well. I mean, he could have ran in there with his all guns blazing and probably got killed. But um, when you play smart and use your environment and it rewards you for that in a game, I think that's a lot better than, you know, either spoon feeding it or, you know, just running in and yeah. making the game about shooting other people. Um, but Yeah, and it, it makes the game longer as well, to be honest, because yeah. if you sit there and think about what you're going to do and then you could try different ways, yeah. it makes it more, you know, immersive, more interesting, keeps you keeps you active on the game for longer yeah um but obviously them zombies will be a threat to you as you're going around you've got to be aware about them and things like that so i think that will be a good game and it's one of the games that i would like to see on xbox but i think it's a playstation exclusive um, i think it is yes so that's kind of annoying but no it does look like a great <laughs> game <laughs> i know did the... they say anything about if it's solo only is it only story driven or is it multiplayer as well or... I, th- I haven't seen that but i think it is just a solo game um i don't right. know what sort of multiplayer aspect they would do with it um because it could be like um the last of us was a, did a really good multiplayer mm. it's a sto- story driven game but then on the multiplayer side was like you were scavenging for what you had to scavenge for weapons during the game and it was just like a little survivor against survivor mode sort of thing yeah and it's, it was really it's quite very different to the actual game itself but it was it was really good to be honest it's, it's the same people i believe or if it isn't, it looks exactly the same. Um, I believe it's Naughty Dog, or at least they're getting involved in it in some way. Because yeah. Sony, you know, they, they move people around all the time. Mm. So I think if it is like that, it'll be pretty pretty good multiplayer on it as well. Yeah, I think that game's also a while out. I'm not sure when that's being released. So they might have more updates on that as far as multiplayer concerns. Mm. But from what I've seen of the game so far, it looks really good. I think there's a lot of hype around the game as well. Hopefully it doesn't let everyone down. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's stay on the uh, the co-op line here and another game is uh, A Way Out did you see that at E3 did you see anything about A Way Out A Way Out who's making that one it's um, I don't know it's by a smaller company alright oh, okay um, is it for PlayStation Xbox it's for both it's for both it's coming out on both right. uh, again early 2018 I'll explain the game to you and again, just let me know if you're interested in this it's so a co-op game sure. there's uh, the two players two playable players um, you play either like on your couch co-op or you can play online co-op and for the whole game it's split screen so you get both right. views um, and the setting even is... when you're playing online yep I, th- I believe so um the setting is right. a prison, and it's called a way out because you're basically breaking right. out of prison with your friend. So you, you're in the world with this other dude, and you have to sort of interact with them and communicate with them on how you're going to break out. So you, you obviously figure things out together, and you can see their movements and your movements, and you're not always together. Obviously, you're yeah. going to be at different places in the prison. Um, so uh, there's always a split screen. And one of the really interesting things is that you can be in a cutscene in one place and the other person can be just walking around like around the cutscene they're not wow. actually in the cutscene so one of the points was they were sort of in this like foyer bit and there was guards um i think this was like at the start so i think they were bringing them into the prison and they were sort of lined up and the guards were around there and the other character was walking around this like balcony type thing around the top and he was just like free free playing so and they can also like join the cutscene i think if they like get too close to it they will join the cutscene um but it's interesting the fact that there is a cutscene and also a playable character in the yeah, scene. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah, it's um, it looks like a good game. Like I said, you break out of prison, and then obviously once you broke out of prison, there's more after that. So it's not yeah. just you know you break out, game complete. Yeah, it's, yeah. You get out, and now how are you staying out? How like how do you progress? And obviously you stay with this guy who uh, is the other character. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's going to make my list. Yeah, the guy who's making it is, uh, he's really passionate about it. If you watch any of the interviews after this, you'll, you, I think you'll agree that he's so passionate about the game. That's refreshing to see somebody who's making a game mm-hmm. who just really loves the game and wants the best for the game rather than I want to make the most money well, here, you know. Well, we also saw that with No Man's Sky, but, you know. Right. <laughs> the guy came out yeah. on E3, I remember him. He was uh, so emotional about it. Yeah. And, and we all know what happened to that. But this game yeah, was, <laughs> yeah. So hopefully this one stays <laughs> in that range where you go, okay, this was a good game, and not go too much hype, too much hype on this yeah. game. Um, yeah. But no, it does look like a great game. Like I said, it's interesting 
the way it's been built as well with the you know the two player co-op yeah. constantly going on um, you don't see, see enough of figures out. you don't see enough of co-op like in room co-op anymore yeah it's always online mm-hmm. I, I like to see i like to see more games that do the co-op in the room where you've got the split screen yeah you know i remember that from when i was younger and it was great and when you have friends around to play games now you just can't do it you yeah just have i to remember sit um and pass the controller yeah i remember uh kane and lynch me and my friend used yeah. to play the story of kane and lynch obviously two two guys there army of two i think was another one and uh he used to just come around oh, my yeah. house we used to sit on the couch together playing and that was just great times it, it's really fun when you know you're with somebody and you're having the same sort of journey with them in a game rather than you know some random person on the other side of the internet who's probably not even got a microphone and um you know doesn't care about the storyline uh like drop in drop out sort of thing yeah like destiny yeah. where you know you play with a guy for five minutes and then they're gone and that's it so yeah it'll be refreshing again to see this game yeah and uh hopefully it works as well as the guy thinks it will as well as it looks so far if it if um, it works if it works perfectly it'll be amazing right. yeah yeah it'll be a great experience grab grab um, a friend bring them around order a pizza done yeah exactly exactly um so we mentioned destiny here's a game that's a little bit like destiny and that's anthem um did you see any of the reveals no. for anthem <laughs> no <laughs> no no this is um one of the real hyped games coming out of e3 right. um it's extremely similar to to destiny in the setup and the players are in like these exosuits and things like that and it's like a, it's an alien type world um but it's going to be better than Destiny. We could, I think well. that's um, <laughs> it's going to be Destiny, but better. Um, and what we saw in the the sort of gameplay that they showed is the guy gets in this exosuit and you can fly around the map in your exosuit like it's a jetpack, but it's you know it goes forever sort of thing. You can just fly around in it. And um, the world's really the bit that he went into was like a, a jungle type um, environment, and it wasn't. It wasn't a dead jungle. You know, sometimes you yeah. go into games and there's nothing about, but there was, like, live animals running around, interacting with each other. I think he had come across, like, this big gorilla type thing that was throwing these pigs around, um, <laughs> killing them, and then he, like, was like, okay, I'm not fighting that, and flew off, and yeah. <laughs> was going to decide to take on something else. So, um, yeah, I mean, that is uh, is going to be a good game, and I think with it being so close to Destiny, it's going to be compared to Destiny. Um Absolutely. Hopefully it lives up to to the trailers. What, what sort of game is it then? What, what's the aim of it? Um, I guess it's uh, like an adventure um, type game. Uh, I guess there's going to be the storyline hmm. of sort of survival. I don't really it's, know. It's sort of an RPG then. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so. I was yeah. so immersed into you know what was happening on the screen that yeah. I didn't look into any more. Uh, um, I'll have a look at that one as well. Why not? Yeah, I just I go think... and watch all of E3 because I missed quite a lot of it this year. <laughs> Usually I stay yeah. up and watch all the conferences, but this year I just didn't. Yeah, I mean, I'm giving you highlights here, so yeah, it's great. You won't it's... have to watch any of the crap. Well, yeah, you just true. bring all the good ones. I don't need to. <laughs> um, I, d- I did want to talk about the Xbox One X um, or yeah. Project Scorpio as it was called before. Obviously, you're a PlayStation user, so I am. Um, I, I did uh, see a bit of it. I did see a bit of the Xbox. What what do you think to the reveal? Um, so right. I've seen so I mean, <laughs> it's a bit. It's kind of a middle finger to everyone who's already bought an Xbox One. Just, right. Uh, yeah. Especially you know now it's like oh this one's now even better than the one you paid for. Also the price mm-hmm. tag is uh you know it's a bit much. Yeah, five five hundred quid. Five hundred going to be a lot. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a gamble I think. It's it, it's consoles. It, they sort of added what PlayStation has to the current Xbox, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Giving it 4K and everything, which PlayStation's got at the moment. Yeah, well, one of the things that they said was that this is... A few of the games that they're going to bring out of it will be native 4K, where PlayStation's 4K was upscaled. Yeah. So it wasn't, like, true 4K. Yeah. And one of the things they're saying is, we're going to do this with native 4K, and it's going to look a lot better. Yeah. Um, and it, it runs... It's supposed to be running quicker. All the sort of specs are just a little bit better than what the PlayStation Pro was. Um, but the consoles come out way too quick nowadays. Yeah. We've just like had the, the S come out, and now this X is coming out well, they, for Xbox. Well, they're coming out like... Um, well, there was a 10-year gap between PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. 
I think. Or is yeah. it 10 years between three and four? Maybe. But, mm. you know, they came out with the best changes. But technology is changing so rapidly that mm. they're changing like PCs do. So you get a new graphics card every like couple of months down the line. So they're doing the, yeah. sort of the same thing. But they, I think virtual reality is where home consoles going and leaving PC behind. In my Are opinion. You, uh, you think virtual reality is the way forward? I think that's going to be where a home console system is going to do better than PC because it's more of a, a more of a standing up sort of open space in your living room experience. I think yeah. PC I mean, sitting at your desk on your own. Yeah. I don't know. Like VR for, I don't know. I don't think it's, it's big enough in its own thing to, to push a, a, a console forward. I think mm. there's always going to be people who want to just sit and play on a screen. And Oh yeah. No, I don't think it's going to be the sole purpose of them no but i think... think it's just going to be the thing that sets it apart from pc yeah yeah because yeah. you yeah, can't I mean, it... they, they can't compete with pcs uh you know changing technology and ability to like adapt them unless you've got customizable consoles then they're just going to have mini computers but for your home for your, uh, yeah which is room. what i thought the scorpio was going to be yeah i thought they when they announced it there was like you're not going to have to buy another console after this this is the end of sort of generational things it's just going to be we're bringing this out and then said? it just gets updated. Yeah. What? Ready? All right. Didn't hear when that. they first announced Scorpio, I'm sure they was talking about this is the like the end of generational consoles. You're just going to buy the Scorpio, and then it's just going to be upgraded. And I thought it was basically just going to be like a PC. Yeah. Um, but obviously they're going to call it a console, and then either the you know just software upgrades would be enough, or you'd actually have to go and buy like like you say, like a graphics card or something yeah. like that and add pieces into your Xbox, but yeah. I don't know. That would be good because then you could... Because it, it, it PCs can be quite complicated sometimes when you're changing parts, but if it's a console where you just uh, plug and play with a new graphics card, that that would be yeah. what you need. You know, just pull mm-hmm. it out, put in your new one, send the other one back or set it on eBay. Yeah. You know, that's, what, that's what you want. So why have they not done that? <laughs> the Xbox One X is gonna be costing too much because of like 4k it's yeah. good but not everyone has a 4k tv to play 4k I, games I on. Know. like have yeah. you got a 4k tv no and i don't have a 4k tv i mean i'm, I'm sure, pretty sure they're gonna be yeah, they're expensive not, to get a 4k like, tv you know, everywhere at the moment on its own. there's and a, then... an option optional extra yeah it's like when a free it's like every, when you got hd then yeah, it took so a while for hd spend... to sort of take off and they got 4k it's gonna take a while yeah yeah so mm. whether like this is gonna sell well out the door yeah. the xbox xbox one x i don't i don't know um i don't think it's gonna be like the xbox one was when that first came out and it was like okay this is the yeah. new generation everyone's gonna want to go and grab one as soon as possible i don't think when the x comes out it's gonna be that i think yeah it's gonna well, be well, the, when the pro came out it didn't feel like a new upgrade. generation it just felt like uh you know, an optional upgrade if you want. Here it is. If you if you like an optional, it's like a not even like yeah. a PS4.5, like a PS4.1, 4.1. And then, so this is what this Xbox is going to be like. It's going to be <laughs> was it? Isn't this the third one they've brought out of the Xbox One? Was it? Yeah. Oh. Hello. What the hell? What do you mean? What the hell's happening to my laptop right now? It just, it just fuck, it just, uh, it just went a little bit strange. I'm not sure what's That's happening. Me, I'm sorry. It's crazy. <laughs> this has never happened okay. to me before. Um, anyway, uh-huh. <laughs> it's it's back now. You've cursed, the, you've cursed the podcast. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's. I don't think the Xbox One X is going to be the next big thing. I don't think I'm going to get one. Um, I'll just wait until. I mean, unless they say they're not bringing out any more and this is it. Which is no, kind of I don't, I don't think so. for any sort of company to say we're done here. There'll be another one. Like I said, I don't, there'll be the Xbox Two. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Call of Duty World War Two. Yeah, yeah. Can I just say something about Call of Duty World War Two? Go for it. So you know, you know when they very long ago, well, not not that long ago, they teased and said Call of Duty is going back to its roots, right? Yeah. And I read a lot of things online from like gaming magazines and that they're like oh it said it's going back to its roots oh what can this mean i mean he thought world war ii obviously means world war ii yeah and then they announced it and they're like oh my god it's world war ii i was like well yeah 
Come on, people. <laughs> like, what else is it going to be? <laughs> but I was yeah. pretty, I was pretty happy. But I was expecting a World at War Two. Although, I was considering like you know they did the whole story ending at the end of World War Two. Yeah. So I didn't really see where they would go with that. So I guess they have to do another one. But D Day in Europe again, from the same perspective again. Yeah. People who were like older gamers would say, okay, we've been here before, same sort of thing, yeah. you know, stormy beaches, things like that. Uh, but for younger guys who probably weren't around, you know, 10 years ago to play these sort of games, yeah. we'll be doing this for the first time. But obviously, yeah. it's going to look a lot better than it did first time we, we ran well, down yeah. beaches. Um, it's going to be a completely different experience. Um, I, I played uh, Medal on a front line, I think, last year. Yeah. Just for our... Just like, you know, replaying it. Mm. And uh, the, the D-Day landed at the start of that. I remember it being hectic. And you go there, there's like three people there. Really? And you're like, yeah, it's just like, you know, <laughs> ten, ten, 10 Americans spread across the whole beach just screaming. And you're like, well, it's not that bad, actually. I think I remember that, like, that landing as well. I, I, yeah. yeah. I remember playing it's through It's like that. terrifying, but then yeah. you do it now. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> so walk in the park, really. Yeah. So, um, no, but Call of Duty World War II... Um, I'm glad, like I'm glad they've gone back to World War Two as well. I think they needed that, yeah. that uh, taking a step back from you know space jumping and all that thing, which yeah. it did well. But I think this game will do a lot better. Um, the online got too complicated in my mind. Yeah, like you used to be able to jump on like even COD Five or Six. You used to be able to just jump on and play. Now you play and it's like all this stuff pops up. Like, did you know about this daily challenge? Did you know about this? new camo you can get did you know this gun you do this you gotta do that like i just want to play yeah i don't need all these extra like drop crates or whatever to keep me interested mm. cod 4 kept me interested world at war kept me interested just by giving me unlocks yep that's microtransactions just yeah. pushed in your face all the time and then sort of... it is it's just too much really yeah I need to calm down <laughs> hopefully there's none of that in uh, hopefully they've took all that out right. they've put it in their own separate tab and if you want your microtransactions go have a look on this page and it will show you well yeah exactly if That's you're interested you in it. buying it then you're going to go over and buy it if you're not you're not just play the game exactly. like you want to exactly it was um, promising that uh, I think was it Battlefront 2 yeah I mean, that got really shown off at E3 which I'm really hyped about and I, I, I did again I thought this was where they were going with Battlefront Sorry, I've just taken over. But <laughs> Battlefront, this really made me happy. Battlefront 2, um, they, the first one came out, you know, everyone was like, oh, he hasn't got a lot of content. And I read somewhere, like, they weren't actually allowed to do any of the new films because they were damaged to the law. Mm-hmm. Um, and they weren't allowed to, um, they weren't allowed to do a lot of things with this game. But the second one, they were given, like, a lot more options. So they could do the story and they could do the new films and everything. Yeah. So I'm really happy about that. And it looks an amazing game. Also, the expansion pass. The uh, what is it? The season pass. Yeah. Is that free or something? Did I re- read? I don't know. Because if I think they said it's free. For I can't remember. I'd not. I haven't looked into the actual exact right how you get it and what you get for the free version and that. Yeah. But I think it could be the start of the end of paid expansions. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> which which is why I think. The 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 better call is that microtransactions might also sort of sliver away mm. into a corner, like you say, off the side of the game as an option. Hopefully, um, I didn't play the first Star Wars uh, game. I do like Star Wars. Yeah. I'm I'm not like a Star Wars hater. I do enjoy the films yeah. casually, but I'm not a huge fan. Never played the first game. Um, I don't think I'll be interested in playing the second. But um, what you said about the whole the first game, I think was. It was rushed to try and get out alongside the movies, where yeah. this time around they've had a lot more time just to sit back and go, okay, we've, like you said, they've got more leeway with this one. They can yeah. um, just put a lot more stuff into it. So I think this game is going to be a lot more polished than the first one was and be a definitely, lot better definitely. game on its own two feet. But like I said, I didn't play the yeah. first one. I probably won't play this one either, but um, I'll, I'll probably watch live streams. I, don't, I watch live streams of Star Wars Battlefront with no intention of yes. buying it. I just sat and watched just... To see what the game was about, <laughs> um, and it was it was pretty crazy. Like you can play as like Darth Vader and things like that, wasn't it? It was um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just jump on as random like icons and run through. I'm not like I said, I don't know too much about it, but it was uh, it looked an interesting game, um, but not interesting. Yeah, they changed it a bit. It. Changed it a bit in the new one where they've got rid of the pickups. 
So like you say, the icons where you pick it up and you can be a, a hero or a villain. Yeah. They've changed it now, so you earn points as you play. So you earn the best players or, you know, people actually playing the objective get points and then they can... Um, right, like a kill get streak. Vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they can get vehicles or heroes or whatever. Which is quite... It encourages people to play the objective and actually, you know, play how it's supposed to be played. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, let's go quickly go back to <laughs> Call of Duty. The new oh, yes, game type that they've announced... Um, war, which is um, very objective based. It's pretty much like Battlefield, where you have like the set missions to do around the map, um, and yeah. it's basically going to have to like uh, the bits that I've seen is like okay, one team is going to be attempting to build this bridge, the other team is going to be trying to stop them. Once that's done, you move on to the next bit, and you just like push forward throughout, and the other team is trying to push you back, and it's very objective based. Um, yeah, and it looks like a very good game type for not camping because one of the main things yeah, about cod was the fact that everyone would find a corner or find their favorite bit to sit in sit there and just rack up kills and with this obviously you're forced to sort of move to stay in the action so um that's gonna make a good game really to good. play yeah there's, um, there's a similar mode of that one of the other cool dudes about fism sounds very similar but i can't remember which one it was and who did it so i but it was really good <laughs> yeah um, so did, if Call of Duty does this, it's going to be great. Did you see the um, the actual multiplayer gameplay that's been sort of... I saw it when it got originally revealed. Right. Um, uh, well, no, they didn't show multiplayer then, did they? No, no I haven't. I haven't seen much. I they, saw an image. They said that which... they showed multiplayer, but it was sort of just sort of cinematic multiplayer. It wasn't like hands-on yeah, like game, yeah. but there's been a few no, YouTubers... Like yeah, there's been a few YouTubers who have now had like hands on sort of time with the game and been able to upload their multiplayer experience. So I think like mm. Jack Frags is one of the guys. All oh, right, yeah. Ali yeah. A has also had a little bit of time and they've got videos on their channel of actual gameplay and it looks like it's gonna be pretty fun. They they both played the war or um game type and I think they played a bit mm. of domination as well, but um it looks very call of duty. It looks like, you know with yeah. Battlefield it's got a certain flow to it and it's a lot longer obviously big big maps and it takes a while you can you know to get back into it sometimes unless you're spawning on a player uh where call of duty you seem to spawn and then within you know five yards you're in another yeah. gunfight with someone it seems like it's going to be back to sort of that um that sort of flow of the thought, game so i always thought thought uh call of duty recently has gone more of an arcadey game yeah where it's more it's very arcadey very like quick you sort of, you die, you respawn, you die, you respawn. But mm. this slows it down a little bit, but not too much, not to the extent where you're, it's like, well, like Battlefield's a lot slower, like you say. Yeah. You can go so it's like back a few in minutes. Where, yeah. So it's back in the good place where it should be. Yeah, I think with the uh, the new game type as well, War, I think, from what I've seen, like the guy playing it, he didn't explain what it was, but there was like, a red's like barbed wire, um, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's not really there, but you could see it as the player, and it marks yeah. like territory, and you couldn't go past that. It says return to the uh, the battlefield, and I think that's the other player's spawn. So you can't actually right. go into the other player's spawn because obviously in this game type where you like defending and pushing and you know things like that, they don't want you to be another person's spawn. So I think yeah, they've of sort course. of marked it off to where you have your own spawn point now that the other team can't get to, and then you can spawn sort of go back and get your position and try and push forward again if that's what that was like i said i didn't i don't know too much about that but i've just seen it on someone playing it but that seems to be a better way because a lot of times in cod especially the old ones um oh, you yeah. got spawn, spawn traps camping. you'd just yeah you'd spawn and dead spawn dead spawn dead spawn dead and it wasn't it's not worth it not a good experience at all um no so hopefully that sort of fixed that and sort of it's going to be a little bit slower than the old call of duties but have enough pace to the more you play it keeps it interesting um yeah. so yeah that's uh i did have battlefront actually on my list to talk about so i'm glad you went over there and spoke about it um, that's all right we've done yeah, literally everything apart from one game which is god of war um which i don't know too much about but i've just seen again snippets of the game and it looks like a good one it's going to be obviously playstation because yeah. god of war is obviously god the of PlayStation. War. yeah um i'm gonna say one game that needs to be looked at if you don't already is wolfenstein wolfenstein 2 yeah um, Wolfenstein 1, uh, New Order, New Blood, Old Blood, and Wolfenstein, the re remaster, Wolf well, remake Wolfenstein, I guess. All brilliant. This one's going to be brilliant. That's all you have to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, d I haven't played any of Wolfensteins. Um, so... If you love a story, you should. Yeah. Uh, 
It's really good. It's really, really uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just one of, the, one of those games that not many people play, but they should. Yeah. Um, and it's solely single player. That's, so there's no multiplayer, no distractions for them. They've just made a great single player game. Yeah. There needs to be more of them. Just yeah. story, one player, just run through it, no, you know, jumping on and just trying to beat pay- players across. There needs to be more just games that you just jump on. One of the one of my favourite games, actually, recently that I played was Little Nightmares. Um, where oh, yeah. Just a little arcade platformer that with a great storyline that I think has been the best game I've played on Xbox One. Like It's just an amazing oh, wow. game. Yeah. It really just was... Have you Have you played it? I haven't played it, no. No, it's, I um, it's yeah. The storyline too is it's amazing. Honestly, it, there's so many shocks, and the game itself just looks great. Little Nightmares is one of my favorite games. I could talk about it for days, but let's not do that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's covered everything that I wanted yeah. to cover um, as far as awesome. games and stuff like that. So yeah, um, thanks for coming on. That's uh, right. Thanks for having me. Finally, it's been a while in the making. We've been talking about this for yes. a bit. We've finally yes. got it done. And you can you can you can say to Ali that uh, the beginning of that podcast where he pretended to be me and said I didn't turn up. <laughs> well, now I'm here and he's not. Yep, I'm telling him that he's getting replaced by a uh, punchball game every week. Awesome. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, there'll What's be up, me? maybe another podcast next week. I don't know. We'll see what sort of uh, Ali's schedule is like and. Um, Yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one very soon.